Hi guys, welcome to InVitroG cloning the PCR. So you need to be able to describe the PCR polymerase chain reaction, explain how polymerase chain reaction is carried out and summarize the advantages of in vivo and in vitro cloning. So in terms of the specification, we are looking here at the uh, PCR. Right, so what do we need to remember? We need to remember that DNA polymerase causes nucleotides to join together as a strand, not complementary base pairing. So that's really important here. The polymerase chain reaction is not the same as semi-conservative replication of DNA in cell. Uh, so what you've learned in the first year of your study. So let's have a look what are the differences. So polymerase chain reaction is the process of making copies of DNA but outside of a living organism. So this can be done in the lab. So what do we need for the uh, PCR? We of course need a DNA fragment because we want to copy DNA. We need primers, so those are uh, short. So those are short sequences of nucleotides that have a set of bases complementary to those at one end of each of the two DNA fragments. So those will be primers that will attach to the ends of the DNA. We need nucleotides. So of course, because we're copying DNA, so we need other uh, nucleotides with bases of adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. We also need uh, enzyme DNA polymerase to uh, to uh, join together nucleotides. And uh, we need to remember that DNA polymerase, it's not going to denature at high temperatures. So that's a really important part of the process. And finally, we need a thermocycler. So it's a computer control machine that can uh, regulate the temperature throughout the process of PCR. So firstly, let's have a quick look at the primers. So what we've mentioned before, there are short single-stranded lengths of DNA with the specific base sequences, which, uh, which are here added uh, to start or stop a process of replication. So as you can see, primers are complementary to the uh, DNA strands and primers are attached to it in a manner that uh, it's uh, one of those will be at the end of the first strand and you're the one at the end of the other strand. So that's really important way of how the primers will be attached. So what are they needed for? Okay, so uh, we can add them at the beginnings or at the end of the uh, part of DNA that we are using. And they are here for the attachment of enzymes or nucleotides to start the process of replication. And they are, of course, complementary, which we've seen. And uh, replication of base sequences can start from here. So how the process of PCR looks like, it's made of three main stages. So firstly, it's a separation of the DNA strand, addition of primers and synthesis of DNA. So this is a diagram that we're going to use to work out the process of PCR. So we're starting with the separation of DNA strand. So how we can achieve this? We can achieve this by... Uh, increasing the temperature to 95 degrees. By increasing this temperature, we are going to break hydrogen bonds. So the DNA strand, double strand, it's going to separate to two strands. Okay. Second, uh, second part of this process is the addition of primers. So we did say that primers are single-stranded, short lengths of DNA which will be attached to the uh, DNA at uh, both ends, okay? And uh, to do so, to add them, we need to decrease temperature now from 95 to 55. So the primers can join a new 
and of course they do so at the complementary basis at the end of DNA fragments. So what is the job of primers? Of course, they, they are going to provide the starting point, the starting sequence for DNA polymerase to start the uh, uh, process of copying. And another important fact is that primers are going to prevent those two strands of DNA from rejoining. Okay, so two important uh, facts about primers to uh, to start the process of uh, copying uh, to, uh, to provide the starting sequence for DNA polymerase, but also prevents the rejoining of two strands of DNA. So once, we, once we've got primers attached, then of course our DNA polymerase and nucleotides are needed. So synthesis of DNA will take place, but this takes place at 72 degrees. So now we need to warm it up to 72 degrees, and this is the optimum temperature for DNA polymerase enzyme to add complementary nucleotides along each of the separated strands. So as you can see on this diagram, those both strands are acting as a template. So DNA polymerase lines up those free DNA nucleotides alongside each of the templates. Okay, beginning, of course, it's at the primers, and we can get now our complementary strands. So let's do a little bit of maths. How many, uh, how many copies of DNA actually are we getting? So from uh, one cycle, we are getting uh, two new copies, okay, from two uh, cycles then we are going to get, of course, uh, eight, uh, eight DNA fragments and from three we are going to get three to power two, so three times three uh, it's nine times, uh, sorry, three times two it's six times two, it's then uh, 12 copies, okay. So those are our our uh, our uh, strands of uh, of DNA produced. Okay, so from one cycle we are getting two. Okay, from two cycles, from those we are getting another two, and from those we are getting again uh, again uh, eight. So there was a my mistake. Sorry here. That's two to power. 3, not 3 to power 2, so 2 to power 3, so we are getting 8 uh, fragments of DNA uh, from 3 cycles. So remember, 2 to power n, where n is a number of cycles, will give you a, a number of DNA fragments that you're going to get in the process of DNA, uh, of the PCR. So to summarize, this is a 6 marker question. So a question was to describe how the PCR is carried out. So from from those uh, from the process that we were looking at, uh, we need to make sure that you always mention the um, temperature and you mention the uh, the things that we need. So primers, nucleotides, and the DNA polymerase. So we did look that we first need to heat DNA to 95 degrees. And this is to separate the DNA strands. Then we need to cool it down below 70. So what we were looking at was 55 degrees to add the primers, uh, attach the nucleotides by complementary base pairing. And this is done by DNA polymerase at the uh, 75 degrees. And the cycle can be repeated, of course. Okay, so one more time to work out the number of DNA fragments in the PCR reaction, we need to use the formula n, uh, 2 to power n, where n is a number of cycles. Right, so that's everything for PCR. See you later.